Hi, in this video I'm going to tie together uh, a bunch of the concepts that I went over for Ionic Framework in order to make an actual app. So, so by the end of this tutorial we should have a functional RSS reader type app. Now it's not going to be extravagant, it's not going to be something crazy awesome, but it's going to be functional. And it should give you a better idea how to apply the stuff that I teach in my tutorials towards apps of your own. Now this tutorial will, will work for both iOS and Android, but since I'm on a, on a Linux machine, I won't be able to build for Mac OS, or for iOS. But if you're on a Mac, you can go ahead and build for iOS and it'll work fine. So because this is more of a major app tutorial, I'm gonna start from scratch and let's start by creating our Ionic Framework project. Alright, so let's go ahead and navigate to that on the desktop. And we're going to add the Android platform. Now, again, if I was on a Mac, I could also add iOS. So, because it, so let's break down what this tutorial is going to accomplish. This tutorial is going to accomplish how to make HTTP requests to a remote server and get a response, how to create lists in Ionic Framework, how to open external URLs in your Ionic Framework app, and how to cache data locally on the device in case your user does not have internet connection. So in order to open remote URLs, we're going to need to go ahead and install an Apache Cordova plugin. So the in-app browser plugin, which I explained in one of my previous tutorials that you can find on my blog, uh, will let you open up external URLs. So let's go ahead and copy it into our terminal. And again, I'll have all these links laid out for you so that way you don't have to go find them through the video. So now that the in-app browser is installed, we can actually start our coding process. So go ahead and open up your app.js file. This is where a lot of the bulk is going to be. We're going to start by calling this example app. We're also going to go ahead and create a controller for our app. So this is going to be our feed controller. It's going to have the ability to make HTTP requests and store data into our scope. So let's go ahead and make our first function. It's going to be an initialization function. And what this function is going to do is it's going to actually ping the Google feed API and it's going to exchange our XML based RSS feed with a JSON XML feed, uh, JSON RSS feed because AngularJS doesn't play nice with XML out of the box. So this Google Feed API makes it really nice for us. So let's go ahead and start. And this particular API uh, requires the following parameters. It requires a version, which is 1.0 at the moment. 
it requires um, a query, which is going to be the URL for our blog. Well, in this case, it's my blog. You can use any kind of RSS feed you want. So I'm going to include my blog. And then it allows for an optional field called num, which um, allows you to specify how many entries to return. By default, it returns four entries. The maximum is 100 entries. I'm going to go ahead and go for the maximum. Then we're going to go ahead and create a success handler. As well as an error handler. Callback, I mean. So in the event of failure, we're just going to spit out to the log that there was an error and the data associated with it. But with our success, we're going to do things a little more complex. We're actually going to do a small manipulation to the data that Google re responds with uh, for use on our HTML page. In reality, for the, the scope of this tutorial, we only care about the entries, but the response that the feeds API gives back includes a lot more than just the entries. But really, you, you only need the entries. So let's go ahead and save that. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to start manipulating the HTML file. So with that open, Let's go ahead and include the controller. And we're also going to initialize that function that we made. So now let's go ahead and create a list. The list, because we're going to get an array of entries, it makes a perfect scenario for, a, for an ionic list. So I'm going to go with div. And we're going to repeat for items. And then we're going to start spitting stuff out on the screen. Alright, so what's, what's happening here is we've created a list, we are looping through our entries um, found here, and then we are putting our entry title in bold, and we are putting our content snippet, which is just a summary, in, um, a, in a span with an HTML bind. Because Google responds with um, HTML entities, in order to prevent garbage data from being shown on the screen, that's why we bind it with HTML. So let's go ahead and go back to our terminal. We're going to try uh, building this.
All right, now that it's built, let's go ahead and install it. Let's delete this old one first. All right, so it installed it here, and we made a, an error somewhere. So let's go back into our code and see if we can find this possible typo. So the error actually ended up being because I was missing a bracket in my code. Um, honest mistake happens to pretty much everyone at some point in time. Uh, so, so moving on, let's go ahead and rebuild it. And install it. And as you can see, it has found a bunch of entries from my blog. And you'll notice that there are no funny characters anywhere. It's all plain, plain text. But it doesn't do anything yet. It's just a list of a list of data. So our next step is actually going to be getting it to work to actually so that way you click it and it'll take you to the actual web page. So going back to our code, we need to add a function. So this function is going to be responsible for bringing us uh, outside of the Ionic app. If you've been following my other tutorials, um, I also have a tutorial on how to use the in-app browser, which we're using right now. If you want a further explanation on it, go ahead and, and search for that on my blog. So now that I've got my browse uh, function made, I can go back to my HTML and we're going to go ahead and, and make it work. So for the item line, we're going to add an ng click and then browse and then the entry link. We're also going to change the div uh, to an A for our hyperlink. Oops. So now if, if I go ahead and compile it and install it, if I click on one of those list items it should take me to my blog. Let's give it a shot. And as you can see, it did. So what we've done so far is we've remotely gathered um, RSS data using an HTTP request to Google server and uh, We've also made use of an Ionic framework list as well as um, the Apache Cordova in-app browser. So the last thing on our agenda is to cache this data in case uh, an internet connection is not available on your user's device. And that can be done simply with local storage. So going back into our app.js we're going to add a few lines here. First of which is going to be in our success callback. So this line right here, it'll take your response, it'll serialize it into a string, and then it'll store it into the local storage every, every time there's a success. So that way you'll always have the most recent data. But if there's an error, what we need to do is we need to grab the data that we stored. So first we're going to check to make sure it exists.
So if it exists, we're going to go ahead and unpack it. And just like that, if, you're, if the internet connection no longer exists, instead of showing nothing on the screen at all, it'll just show what was last saved. So that's really all there is to it, to this simple um, RSS reader app. It, it's nothing extravagant. All we did was we, we pulled, pulled the summaries. We made use of the Google Feed API. We made use of caching. And we made use of the in-app browser plugin. If you like this uh, video tutorial, go ahead and please subscribe to my channel. You can view write-ups to all of the uh, material that I used on my written blog, which I'm going to include in a link in this current video. Uh, stay tuned, there's going to be a lot more great material to come. Thank you.